we grow sawdust based mushrooms. So what we would have here are mushrooms that in nature grow in trees. So we start with pure red oak sawdust. All the ingredients we use are organic. And the sawdust, we bring it in and we keep it for about 12 week period. It isn't actually a composting. It isn't like white mushrooms, which are you know, grown on composted straw. This is more of a fermentation. From there, sawdust goes in the mixer. It's mixed with organic rice bran, and then calcium, either in the form of crushed oyster shell or gypsum. And that is all mixed up, and it is put into these bags. So from here, they're put on carts, and they're put into the retort. Here, they're steamed for four hours. Uh, then they're put in the cool down section. The blocks are left here overnight. Tomorrow, the, the culture will be introduced to these bags. So this is actually our clean room in here. We have two workers who are actually introducing the organism or the spawn to the individual bags and then sealing it up. So these are the bags that already have been spawned. So what you'll see in there is a bit of the spawn in each one of these bags. What started my interest in, in growing specialty mushrooms. We're, we're talking 30 years ago. I was working at a white mushroom farm in San Francisco. The members of the Mycological Society had inoculated logs and were having trouble growing logs. And so they brought me dozens of these logs because they couldn't get them to grow. And I was growing mushrooms in a very leaky warehouse in San Francisco. So I took these logs and I put them in these garbage cans that I was also using to collect rainwater that was dripping from the roof. And so I actually shocked these logs because of the cold rainwater and then I left them longer than I should have. And so they started producing mushrooms and I got this really reputation for growing all these incredible mushrooms, but it, all, it had to do with the fact that I had just put them in these, you know, container of cold water and it just shocked them into producing. So these are our primary incubation rooms. So in these rooms, the organism that was introduced in the clean room is growing through the block. And if you look, you'll see the organism. It's sort of like a spider web and it's growing through the sawdust. This is white here. You know, mushroom production is really, I mean, commercial mushroom production is pretty recent. I think it started really big time in the 40s. When we started, our interest in specialty mushrooms and exotic mushrooms were that, first of all, that they are a real very good food. So this is a more mature room, actually and there were very few people doing what we were doing also. As it progresses, you see the organism growing kind of through the block. So after a week, you get a very little bit amount, and then as you start ending the four-week period, the organism completely takes over the block. And in that period of time, the organism readies itself to be able to grow mushrooms. And that would be the mycelium? Or the, the mycelium. The, that is the living organism. What the mushroom is, is the way that living organism reproduces. Because the mushroom is what's going to produce the spore that's going to be released to the environment till it finds another host. So, this is where we grow our tree oyster mushrooms. So after four weeks of incubation, these mushrooms are all ready to go. So we slit holes in the bag and they start producing the mushroom. In nature, the organism would probably grow between the heartwood and the bark of a tree, would find protection from the bark and get its nutrients from the heartwood. Then when it would be ready and the moisture conditions are right, it would find little holes between the bark and produce the mushrooms. What we're doing is, is we're cutting slits in the bag, and when the organism is mature, then it'll start growing mushrooms from that. So we grow five different types of oysters. One of the oysters I grow are these white, white oysters. I hope I have some growing. 
And the reason I keep that strain going uh, has to do with utilizing them for bioremediation. And I'll show you some strains. These are mushrooms. This white mushroom actually is indigenous to San Francisco. We were involved in a bioremediation project. The organism of the oyster mushrooms actually break down carbon molecules to single carbon molecules. At the last oil spill in San Francisco, the oil was collected in hair mats. And after it was recovered with the hair mats, the plan was to compost the hair mat with the organism that oysters come from. And the reason we got this strain was so that we had a strain that was indigenous to San Francisco, so there wasn't any possibility of the organism releasing into the Presidio. So we took a, a, a mushroom from the Presidio and started growing it. And now we actually maintain it because it's a real nice mushroom. It grows very large. But it also, if we ever do need you know, that strain for a bioremediation project or something in San Francisco, we would have the organism of it alive. Uh, why do mushrooms, uh, why are they good for bioremediation? What is well, fungi breaks things down. I mean, if we didn't have fungi in the world, we would be up to our noses in garbage, or even higher. This type of organism specifically could break things down to the level that you can make a compostable organism out of the remnants of the, the oil spill. So, something that may, might work in the future, you know. Well, the other thing is, is I'm producing about 3,000 of these blocks a week. So, within any week period, I could come up with 1,500 pounds of this organism that would be able to break down. Do you think there's a danger that we don't respect the fungi? I mean, that we don't preserve it? I mean, you are, but, but well, people don't see it? Or don't fungi is fun. It's, you're not supposed to see fungi. It's under the ground. You know, as you know, like the largest organism in the world is this mat of fungi that was discovered that it was one large organism because somebody took the DNA of this, you know, this fungal mat at one side of the park and at the other side of the park and they realized it was all one giant organism. Slow food. Pardon me? What's the connection with mushrooms and slow food? We have always kind of worked with slow foods initially. Um, the whole philosophy of slow food is using really nutritional food. This room here is King Trumpets. I hope I have some growing. And they just picked these too. And also just take time in the, in, in the presentation and the preparation of food. So these get to be very large mushrooms. These are just pinning right now. These have a kind of sweet flavor, a real thick, dense texture. Now I've been telling people of late to take a potato peeler to them or a mandolin and cut them paper thin. And their text, you know, they hold up really well. Their texture is a lot like, uh, after you saute them, they kind of come out like a chow fun noodle. You talk about flavors and all, but what about protein and nutritional value? You know, mushrooms like the shiitakes actually have protein. They have less water. You know, the white mushrooms are like 85% water. So that, you know, you know, there are nutrients in the white mushrooms. But, they, but usually the, the tree mushrooms are really considered very special. Mario is just now opening the bag. So after the, the mushroom kind of pins and forms in here, then the mushroom will grow from that fungal tissue. And so these, this is actually will form these mushrooms. I think I read that in 2001, 87% of all mushrooms sold in the U.S. were the... Agaricus, the white mushroom. The white mushroom. And that, to me, seems sort of what we're talking about, slow food. And they, you know, they're sort of talking about the arc of taste and having and keeping variety. Well, right. Food. Well, I mean, and that's part of it also. I mean, we, you know, if you go to our shop, you'll probably find 40 different mushrooms. Do you think this is an important part of our diet? Well, as with anything, you're looking at balance in food. So a good thing about mushroom is if you have mushrooms in your stew, you're using less meat. But my feeling is, is like in soups and stews, it isn't just the meat and it isn't just the vegetables, it's the gristle and everything else kind of that you add. And when you're adding mushroom, you're adding to that balance. And I think that's what's really very important in food. So these are our shiitakes. These will be what, what's gonna be picked tomorrow. 
specialty mushrooms. They are a different mushroom than the regular white mushrooms. They're thick and they're dense and they have a... There's differences in, in the texture and the flavors. Do you think it's important we know that? Texture and flavor? Well, I think you should chew your food too. I mean, it's all really important. We grow a yellow tree oyster. Mushrooms that grow on trees are also considered medicinal. And the reason is, is the organism, the fungi, which breaks things down, that's what it naturally does, breaks down these hard sugars in the hardwood. In breaking them down, uh, the organism produces mushrooms that are very high in complex sugars called polysaccharides, which our bodies use to fight diseases. So most of mushrooms that grow on trees are also considered medicinal also. So oysters are considered having properties that are anti-tumoral. Shiitakes are pretty well known for boosting one's immune system. We also grow reishi mushrooms, which help like T-cell production. Okay, so this is the start of a maitake mushroom. This mushroom in particular is taken a lot in pill form where they either use the mycelium base or an actual mushroom base. They're taken for people with compromised immune systems. So this is stuff that isn't just uh, Eastern science? I mean, no, it's actually kind of docu very well documented. The Japanese have done studies on shiitake mushrooms actually since World War II. And it's pretty documented, you know, the mushroom's properties in, in boosting the immune system, lowering cholesterol. I mean, they're really... I end up feeling like an, uh, a snake oil peddler, you know, after, you know, and so I usually tell people, take a look in the internet, but there's a lot of information on, on mushrooms and, and their properties. I just grow them. <laughs>